Hydrogen surrounding NGC 4632 could make it a rare polar ring galaxy. A bubble of galaxies has been found measuring a billion light years across. And Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un meet at an East Russian cosmodrome, seemingly to discuss space collaboration efforts. It's Thursday, September 14, 2023. These are the science and space headlines you need to know now. Celebrating 20 years of Trekzone, this is Trekzone's Talk and Science. International astronomers using the ASCAP radio telescope have revealed a galaxy wrapped in a cosmic ribbon. The research presents a stunning image of NGC 4632, which seemed like a normal galaxy in optical light until ASCAP turned its ears to the galaxy and discovered a ring of gas. This now means NGC 4632 is likely a polar ring galaxy. And for more, co-author Professor Babel Kohubalski is beaming in. Professor, welcome to Trekzone. What is a polar ring galaxy? Well, exactly how you described it. I mean, we have this a galaxy in the middle and uh, for, you know, for various reasons, there is a ring of gas around it, uh, kind of orbiting the pole of this galaxy. That's where the polar ring name comes from. What's the working theory on how the hydrogen uh, got to surround the galaxy? I think um, this galaxy has stolen gas from a companion. So many, many galaxies live in groups or even in clusters. So there are gravitational interactions between these galaxies. And when galaxies are close to each other, then those interactions are particularly strong. So it, it's then relatively easy to uh, take away gas from the outer disk of a companion galaxy and make it your own, especially if you are the big guy and these little galaxies don't have as much mass, so uh, their gas gets, uh, gets taken away. And depending on the different orbits, this gas either ends up as a polar ring, as in this case, sometimes it just it gets accreted to the outer disk and is one way the galaxies grow larger inside. Well, Dr. Nathan Degg and Dr. Christine Speckens from Queen's University in Canada led the research you co-authored, uh, but it was the Wallaby survey uh, down here in Australia that was crucial to this find, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, it's the ASCAP telescope. I mean, the ASCAP telescope is now in full survey mode since November last year. All the surveys that were approved over 10 years ago are, are full ongoing. So the data flood has started. A Wallaby is one of those projects, it's one of the biggest together with EMU and Wallaby is focusing on finding hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas in galaxies, in the outskirts of galaxies and, and between galaxies that may have interacted at some time. So the hydrogen is kind of the streams and clouds that we find between galaxies as a signpost of their gravitational interactions. So, so Wallaby is uh, planning over the next five years to observe the whole southern sky. Uh, each of the pointings is, is really, really deep so that we can detect hopefully about 200,000 galaxies in, in five years. So uh, several hundred of those hopefully are, are polar ring galaxies and of course other unusual objects that um, mean uh, uh, individual uh, follow-up of those galaxies with other telescopes, be it in the optical infrared or with the Mercat telescope in, in South Africa, are then uh, crucial to understand even more about these wonderful and sometimes weird objects. Just incredible. Uh, and with so many tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of galaxies uh, potentially out there from the Wallaby survey, there's got to be a couple dozen at least more of these polar ring galaxies out there. Oh, definitely hundreds. I mean, one, one important thing is uh, how do you find these galaxies? The data volumes are now so large that it really becomes searching like for a needle in a haystack. And so uh, we have developed a source finding software, particularly to address this problem, because we need to find the signal above the noise, anything that sticks out above the noise. And the better we do that, the more objects we find. And the following step then is to see uh, which of these objects are, you know, have stars, uh, look similar to what we already see in the optical. Generally, they are factor two larger. 
But then um, one in a hundred objects is unusual, has a ring, has a stream, has an, an extra arm, has a companion. And uh, then we get particularly excited and we always feel a bit like detectives. It's like, oh, here's something new. Oh, what could it be? How did it get there? <laughs> I love it, Professor. Good luck with the rest of it. Hopefully we can chat again about more polar ring galaxies as you find them with Wallaby and uh, ASCAP. Thank you very much, Matt. Glad to be on your show. Another international team of astronomers has discovered a giant bubble of galaxies measuring one billion light years across in the nearby universe. The team says this phenomenal bubble is a fossil from the time of the Big Bang 13 billion years ago when the universe was formed. Team member Dr. Cullen Hallett from the University of Queensland's School of Mathematics and Physics said the discovery has significant implications for how the expansion rate of the universe is measured. It's a major point of contention amongst cosmologists. Structures of this type are predicted by the Big Bang Theory as a pattern of wrinkles in the density distribution of the early universe known as baryon acoustic oscillations. A team of researchers, engineers and technicians have developed a smart box to power the world's largest radio telescope currently under construction in Western Australia. Because the SKA Low Telescope will receive extremely faint signals that have travelled across the universe for billions of years, power and electrical components had to be as radio quiet as possible. Enter the engineering and operations team at the Curtin University node of the, Interna the International Centre for Radio Astronomy Research who designed and built the first set of 24 smart boxes, which were 10 years in the making. A contract to build up to 12,000 of these smart boxes for the entire fit out of the SKA Low Telescope of 131,072 antennas was recently awarded to Perth-based company AVI after a competitive tender process. This is the biggest contract in Australia for SKA construction, outside infrastructure and software, realising the benefits intended from the Australian government's investment into the pre-construction activities over the past decade. A five-hour summit was held at an eastern Russian cosmodrome this week between Russian President Vladimir Putin and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Space.com reports its likely space mission collaboration was high on the agenda, with the meeting capturing global attention as the invasion of Ukraine continues. The BBC reports that Putin told assembled media that UN shows great interest in rocket engineering. Additional reports suggest a crewed mission to orbit was discussed as well as, Rutten, as, well as Russian assistance for North Korean spy satellites. Elon Musk says SpaceX has cleared the logistical hurdles that were standing in the way of the next Starship flight. The April 20 first flight saw significant issues arise, culminating in the spectacular self-destruction above the Gulf of Mexico. The United States Federal Aviation Administration concluded its investigation last week, identifying 63 corrective actions that must be taken to prevent mishap reoccurrence. Musk posted on his social media platform that the team had completed 57 of those 63 items, with the last six being for future missions. It's unclear at this time when we'll see the next launch. Axiom Space have unveiled their next crew for a trip to the International Space Station, and it's a diverse casting. The four men hailing from different countries, including Italy and Turkey's first citizen in space, will fly no earlier than January 2024 on a Crew Dragon to the International Space Station, launching from the Kennedy Space Center. The Lucy spacecraft launched in October 2021 to visit the Trojan asteroids in the main asteroid belt has locked eyes on asteroid Dinky. This one kilometre wide asteroid has been added to the mission spec to challenge Lucy's risk mitigation procedures. Right now, it's a blurry dot and the cameras aboard the probe won't resolve any surface detail until the day of encounter, which is likely to be November 1. The optical navigation program will track the asteroid relative to the star-studded sky to guide Lucy through a successful flyby. As I said, that's predicted to be November 1, when the probe will be just 425 kilometres away, travelling at 4.5 kilometres a second. 
Well, we are podcasting on YouTube and across every podcast app. Find each of Trekzone's shows on Google or Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, tuned in, Spotify, and more. Plus, Trekzone's channel in the iTunes library gives you a one-stop shop for all of our goodness. So jump onto your favorite podcast app, find Trekzone, and subscribe. On YouTube, membership continues to be available, early access for less than a cup of coffee per month. And of course, our Facebook and Instagram feeds always have the week's highlights. This is our 20th year to the world. We are Trekzone, going boldly since 2003. I am, of course, Matt Miller.